Allied Health continues. I'm Mark Allen. I'm really, really looking forward to our conversation coming up with Zen Honeycutt. She's the founder of a national coalition of unstoppable moms, okay? Moms across America. The motto is Empowered Moms, Healthy Kids. I'm not a mom, but I am a dad, and I want to take care of my kids. And I'm trying not to get them, uh, trying to convince them they're adults, not to uh, not to eat GMO, genetically uh, modified foods, as well as uh, to uh, to stay away from pesticides and things like that. Uh, our guest is Zen Honeycutt. Zen, welcome to Late Night Health. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everybody. Thank you, and uh, thank uh, uh, thanks to uh, James Messina who uh, introduced us. Um, and that's right, thank you, James. We really from Pulverize. Uh, yes, that's right. Right, fantastic new organic gardening weed killer solution, which we're thrilled to have after forty years of Roundup. We think that it's important that people know that they can actually take care of the weeds in their driveway, sidewalk, backyard with an organic solution. I have to tell you, I remember in the early 70s, my dad walking around his house. He loved to garden. He had this big white container and it had a nozzle on it. And I am convinced it was Roundup. And he would Mm. spritz it here and spritz it there all over the place. Okay. and I'm pretty sure it was. yeah. Yeah. Because it was the only thing out there at the time. And uh, he swore by it, of course, but nobody knew that it was a probable carcinogen. Probable. They've lost hundreds of millions of dollars so far in lawsuits, and who knows what they'll lose again, and that's Monsanto with Roundup and glyphosate, um, which is the active ingredient in Roundup. How did you get involved in, in fighting, first of all, Roundup, and then let's talk about GMOs as well. What was your yeah, well, impetus? It was my my children's health that led me into this. My children were sick. They had multiple food allergies, well, more than multiple. They had up to 21 to 22 different food allergies and intolerances. And this was very odd because my husband and I never had allergies. And one of them had autism symptoms around eight years old. The other one almost died from uh, a not Thanksgiving it's Thanksgiving uh, stuffing, and it was horrifying. And I just was a very confused, angry, you know, um, stressed out mother, which is like many millions of mothers today and fathers. You know, our children's health is is, is, a, is actually a crisis right now. One of two of our children have a chronic health issue. So it was it was my children's health that led me to looking into what's going on with the food supply because. I thought, why could my kid eat a hot dog one day and not the next? You know, why was he having these reactions? Something's going on. It can't just be him. It's got to be the food. So I looked into it, and I found out about GMOs, genetically modified organisms, which we can talk about more later. But it led to learning about glyphosate because 80% of GMOs, genetically modified, you know, crops like corn and soy and sugar and canola, are engineered to withstand glyphosate, which is the declared active chemical ingredient in Roundup. There's actually lots of active ingredients in there which are very harmful, but they say that they they claim that glyphosate is the main one in order to get it approved by the um, EPA. So I found out about glyphosate and that they're spraying it on the majority of GMO foods, and then later on I found out that they're spraying it also on non-GMO foods, such as wheat and sugar and um, beans and legumes and oats, and I thought, holy mackerel, this means we can't just avoid GMOs, we have to avoid all conventional foods that could be sprayed with these with this chemical um, herbicide as a drying agent before harvest. So this means we really have to eat 100% organic, because organic doesn't allow not only GMOs, but they don't allow pesticides and herbicides such as Roundup to be sprayed on them. So it was a it was a very daunting realization and one that I know the majority of America does not want to know. So Well, at the same time, when I first heard about GMOs, and I don't remember how many years ago that was, I thought, hey, this is a real good thing. 
I mean, we're going to have more food. It's going to be great. Oh, this is good for the world. And then I started doing the, some research. The intention is good. Yeah. The intention is good. But mm-hmm. it turns out that there are people who are allergic to it. There's uh, studies that show that, you know, honeybees are don't like it at all. It's killing them. Um, and it's potentially killing us as humans. So I stay away yeah. from that as much as I possibly can. There are a couple of things that my wife and I argue about, and Zen, I'm going to make you a marriage and family counselor here. Um, bring right. it on. Bring it on. So she said, why do we need organic bananas? They have a skin. Why do we need organic avocados? They have a skin, and we don't eat them. Right. Any Any thought right. on that? Well, absolutely. The problem is, is that not all pesticides stay on the surface, the pesticides and herbicides. In fact, glyphosate goes into the cells of the plant and does not wash off. It does not dry off, does not wash off, and does not cook off. And that's a huge problem. And it's also inside the... It's not sprayed directly on bananas or avocados. It can be sprayed on the ground of things such as almonds. So we tested almond milk and found glyphosate in almond milk and in wine because it uptakes. It can absorb. So if glyphosate is sprayed around a tree in order to get rid of the weeds, the, the roots will uptake glyphosate right into the entire plant and into the grapes and into the almonds and, you know, things like that. Now... Bananas and uh, um, avocados, I would be very wary of chemicals also getting into, you know, the fruits or vegetables, I mean, those those fruits as well. And I I would just, I mean, if you don't have a choice and you need to eat, they're they're better because they have skins, you know, and and a, a surface, you know, even corn has a husk, it's better. But if it's genetically modified or if it's, uh, you know, you run that risk of the, the genetic mutation, but if it's just sprayed with the chemicals, you know, just know that not all of the chemicals wash off. They can't go inside. All right. I've said that yeah. too, but maybe, you know, our spouses believe other people more than they believe us. With Well, we do the best we can. And yeah, I've, <laughs> I've had many people tell my husband things and then he gets it too so after, from them and not me. So... Sometimes it's just a, a way of listening <laughs> and right. you hear from another source. Well, it's also it's also the word, you know, organic. For whatever reason, I cannot wrap my arms around or my head around the fact that organic foods cost more than non-organic. And the reason is because you're not putting out pesticides and fertilizers and all of this in the organic foods. And the stuff that they do put on that, the organic things you were mentioning to me before we started, diatomaceous earth, for example, it, that, that's cheap. I mean, there's there, it's very low cost. Why is organic food so much more? Yes. Well, I, it's funny. I just went by a YouTube talk saying, why is organic food so much more effing expensive? I haven't watched it, but I can tell you, uh, you know, there, there's very good explanations for it, and one of them that is that it's a, it's a misconception, actually. So the organic farmers have to pay fees in order to grow their food in a way that's safer for human beings, right? The conventional farmers do not. They can spray chemicals all over their crops, and they can buy GMO seeds coated with chemicals, and then they get government subsidies. So they are actually paid by our tax dollars to grow food that's toxic and poisonous for us. So we are paying for it. We're paying for it through our taxes. It's, I don't know, what is it? It's just tens of of millions or maybe it's even billions of dollars now that go to um, GMO farming and agrochemicals. So, and have you uh, seen the seeds for GMOs? They're, They're wrapped in heavy plastic and it says, don't touch. Yeah, and then they expect us to eat that, you right. know, and, it doesn't and for, make sense. for the cows, you know, the meat of the cows, that for us to be okay with that, that the cows eat it and the pigs eat it, and then we eat that meat with the toxins in that meat. So if you look at the cost of organic versus medical cost from eating conventional, it is way cheaper to eat organic. I mean, I've seen this in my own family. My family switched to organic and within a year or two, we stopped spending the $15,000 a year that we were spending on medical care costs with insurance, and we now spend almost nothing 
I mean, it's we save we save ourselves thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars a year by eating organic, and and you can see it actually in the upfront cost as well. If you buy a five pound bag of a potatoes and cut them up into French fries and cook them at home, which my kids love doing now, um, you can save yourself for a family of five from eating out twice a week. You eat at home instead and make those French fries at home. You can save nine hundred seventeen dollars a year. Just from the fries. I have to tell you that going to, you know, that big place with the golden arches, right? I don't know how anybody can afford a family of of four because it's over a hundred bucks right now or close to it for, you know, burgers and fries and all that other stuff that we're not it's supposed to be eating. To eat out. It is yeah, it, it is. Be at least sixty bucks we're for gonna, my family to eat out. It is at it, a fast food restaurant. Right. It's it is expensive. Uh, Zen Honeycut uh, is our guest uh, from Moms Across America. What is the uh, the website? We're going to be back in a second, but give it again right now. Sure, MomsAcrossAmerica.org. MomsAcrossAmerica.org. It's a national coalition of unstoppable moms, unstoppable, and uh, maybe a couple of stoppable dads as well. Uh, don't go away. Uh, Zen and I return, and we invite you to listen to us at LateNightHealth.com, LateNightHealth.com. Take it away, insane Daryl Wayne. Welcome to Guide to the Soul. This is Robert Clancy. Opening your heart is the only way to allow all the light in. Unconditional love does exist, but it takes trust, something not a lot of people are willing to give. But how can you expect it if you don't provide it too? All hearts are refillable, rechargeable, and renewable. So why worry about being burned? By giving, you have everything to gain. Think of how beautiful your life would be if someone loved you without barriers, gave all of their heart to you without conditions, and wrapped their soul around you like it was your last day on earth. Today, you can be that person for someone else. For more inspiration from Robert Clancy, visit GuideToTheSoul.com or go to the Moments with Robert page on LateNightHelp.com and toxin cripple cells. This is a super powerful antioxidant. Bob Greska is so confident that you'll love his Carbon 60, he wants to send you a bottle at 50% off the regular price to see how life-changing this will be for you. Call 720-600-6040. That's 720-600-6040. Visit c-60.com to learn more. Call 720-600-6040 now or visit c-60.com. 